So in the last video, I said that we would finish up on chapter five of this book, Designing Your Life by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. The books I've been reading, as most self-help books do, have lots of exercises for you to do. Don't get too wrapped up in the exercises and doing them correctly and what could go wrong and all of that because it's really just for fun. It's a game and treat it like that, albeit it's a game that might open your mind. Okay guys, it's time to expand your mind with a game called Odyssey plan. Let yourself be open to the play of it. I want to emphasize that this exercise, while it's really great for opening your mind up in ways that you maybe hadn't before, it is not like a business plan or a perfect plan. It's just a jumping off place. And the reason that they suggest doing three separate but equal plans is because we tend to get wrapped up in the one plan we already have. For instance, my plan is the plan for building a YouTube empire. And I actually worked through that in the sheet that's contained here within the book. So you can actually work in this book as a workbook or you can make copies of these and work on them separately. Or you can even do a hand-drawn version of this worksheet, which works just as well and probably gives you even more space to create. Getting back to the worksheet in chapter five on Odyssey planning. On page 96, they call this Odyssey Planning 101, because our journey in life is like an odyssey. We're all Odysseus, aren't we? We're going off on a journey and we don't know what's going to happen, what kind of story will unfold. There could be as many different stories unfolding in your life as there are sands in the hourglass of time. He suggests designing three different lives, and this is how they design it. They have a section for you to kind of draw your progress the progress in that particular journey. They have a place for you to put the title of your journey. They have all of these different dials. He calls these a dashboard in the book, and they kind of look like a dashboard in a really fancy car. They have dials for resources, for whether or not you like the plan, for your confidence level regarding the plan, and for the plan's coherence in its relationship to your own life. So I'm gonna say, these are all really good ideas to have on your dashboard so that you can compare with the other two lives that you're designing, but they're not critical. I think the critical thing is just writing this stuff out and thinking about it because any one of the lives that I worked on is legitimate. Any one is a legitimate way to go and I could have probably come up with 10 more if I'd taken the time to do it. But mine include a YouTuber for people like me and that's what I'm doing right now. It's just an expansion on this current idea and I'm pretty happy with it. So I don't really struggle with coming up with ideas. I know some people do, don't worry about it. Everybody has their strengths. Coming up with ideas just happens to be one of mine. Then the second one I came up with was travel like a boss with George. I don't know why they suggest a six word title that seems to be a magic number for them. So I went ahead and came up with six words for each of my titles. Travel like a boss with George and George is my husband means creating a travel plan for us to go with our dog and travel all kinds of different places and blog and vlog about it. The third plan that I came up with is called Arts Retreat for All with extras. And the extras would be an incubator to design ways for artists with disabilities to work more comfortably and create a level playing field. Then I came up with all these plans. I wrote out my six word titles for each of the plans. I came up with three questions for each of the plans. And then I drew a sort of little master plan of how these stages work out from year to year because each of the columns they provide in their worksheets is a column representing a year. For instance, if you were to look at my A YouTuber for People Like Me worksheet, on year one, I had make 25 or more videos on three books, then find another subject. And I've actually already made, this will be video 23. So it's only been two months and I'm already on video 23. 
I think 25 is going to be pretty easy within a year. In fact, I'm thinking in a year I could do, I could potentially do 100 in a year, which I'm still enjoying it, so why not? Then develop a plan for regular social media outreach in year two. Year three, create special things for subscribers and return to expanding Sally Pal. And then share, share is all over this thing. Share, 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 share. If I could turn back time. Then in year four, develop other channels. Be authentic. That's a really big one. I did that in bold letters because being authentic, mm, that is critical to having this be successful. And uh, continue to do my music and share. And then in year five, I have monetized 4,000 hours of viewing in 365 days. That doesn't mean the first 365 days, any 365 days, and 1,000 subscribers in 365 days. I'm not going to go through all of them specifically, but I do want you to think about actually sitting down and doing the exercise. Do it your way. You don't have to do it exactly the way they have it outlined, but write something out. Give yourself some idea of what it is you want to do. Don't let yourself get stuck in doing what you've always done or what people think you should do or what you're trained to do because it could be that you're trained to do a lot of different things and the fact that you are doing the thing that you're doing, if it's not making you happy, if you're not finding fulfillment in the thing that you're doing in life and you think you could do something else that would allow you to make a living and give you more joy, maybe even a great deal more joy, you really want to think about that. Because if you get to the end of a five-year period and look back and think, hmm, I could have done something different, and I wouldn't be miserable today. So, just saying, don't let that happen to you. But they do say in the book, do keep in mind things other than career and money. Even though those things are important, if not central, to the decisive direction of your next few years, there are other critical elements that you want to pay attention to. That's probably pretty true, and I think things like your family, your life enjoyment, your activities outside of work, where you live. I mean, there are so many other things that go into making a life satisfying that don't include work. There are three things I want to focus on today, and one is not to get wrapped up too much in doing this right. Have fun with it. Be light with it. Just do the exercises like you're playing a game. The second thing is use the worksheets they give you as a jumping off place. It's a springboard for you to create something. You can always expand or evolve the exercise to something that really works for you. Remember, after all, this is a study of one. But if you want to get their worksheets, you can go to www.designyour.life. And you can find these worksheets or game sheets and download them yourself. And then you can use as many as you want. If you scribble out something and you don't like the way it looks, then just you know, print another one off. And the third thing is sharing your vision with other people. I think more important than anything is sharing with people who support you. If you share with people who make light of your ideas or really don't believe in pursuing your dreams, then you'll probably get back the kind of feedback you'd expect. It won't necessarily be super supportive. But if you are careful about who you share it with and share it with like-minded souls, then you're going to find that you actually build a team, a team that shares dreams with each other. And that, that is so delicious and fun because you'll bounce ideas off of each other and things will expand. Your ideas about what's possible will expand. So find yourself a group of two or three people. Could be people in your family, could be friends, could be a book club, who knows. But I think sharing actually expands the whole process. And that's one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel in the first place. This YouTube channel was my accountability strategy. I wanted to have a way to be accountable for doing the exercises that are in the book. And I knew if I created a YouTube channel where I would tell people I'm going to share something two or three times a week about my journey in these three books, then I'd have to follow through, wouldn't I? Find people who will support you in what you're doing, who don't think too seriously about all of this. Not that serious and big things won't happen. They might. In fact, they probably will. 
There's no right way to do it. It's your life. You get to say how it goes. These worksheets in the book, and I don't think worksheets is really a very glamorous name for these things. I'm going to say game sheets. Whatever you want to call them, it doesn't really matter. Have fun with them. Allow yourself to think of things that you don't know are possible. If you just write down everything that you know you can do, it kind of takes the fun out of it. But if you write down things that you're not sure, what if? What if I took a trip around the world? Is that even possible? What if I built an arts retreat for people with disabilities to collaborate with other artists? Would that be possible? What if I started a YouTube empire? Is that possible? Don't take it too seriously. Be light with it and be light with yourself. It'll be a lot more fun that way and you'll probably come up with a lot more ingenious ideas. I encourage you all to subscribe to my channel and thank you for your comments. I love it when people reach out and say what it is that they've been learning. Say something in the comment section below and share with everybody because we're a community. And also, be sure to like if you like it. So if you like the video, press the like button. If you don't like the video, I love sharing all this stuff, you guys. I want to end with something the guys who wrote this book said near the end of chapter five. The ground rules for listening are these. Tell your listeners not to critique, review, or advise. You want them to receive, reflect, and amplify. Find two to five people who are there for you and will show up for an evening dedicated to helping you design your life or who are willing to read this chapter at the very least. When it's time for questions, tell me more about is a great approach that keeps the inquiry supportive. Make this life your life. And make sure to like the channel. Comment if you want. Subscribe if you're getting something out of it. And I'll see you again in a couple of days with a brand new video from Marie Forleo's Everything is Figure Outable. Thanks so much for watching. I really do enjoy being able to share this with you. It's a privilege for me and quite magical. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Oh, <laughs>